Jackman was pulling this off. Right. Oh man, that was a good movie. It was. I think I have that one. Mm. There was that one, and then The Illusionist came out at the exact same time, which was Edward Norton. Yeah, I and didn't see that. That one. was another good one. Yeah. But different, different twist at, yeah. on that one. So, um, for as a kid, I think my favorite was the Chronicles of Narnia series. Okay. Yeah, I can get behind that one. So I read that one all the time. I only read the first three. Well, not the first three, but the the main three that everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. Those are the most. In, I mean, those are the most adventure. Mm -hmm. Like there are seven, and so the first four are the ones that been turned into movies right the other three were harder to read mm. as a kid because the horse and his boy was like very not the like layout of a narnia book mm -hmm. that you would expect like hero bad guy yeah. all that kind of stuff um the magician's nephew was trippy like drug trippy and then the last battle was more philosophical or had more mm. of the religious and the wrapping up of the whole world right end of time thing in it mm -hmm. so those would always be i always felt those three horse and his boy could be turned into a movie pretty easily yeah um but the last battle i don't know how they would do that one as a movie because <laughs> there's nothing other than the closing of the whole series there's nothing really in there that would right. cause people to go see it in the theater so they already made that one uh, left behind starring nick cage <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, I like that one. Yeah. Um, you still uh, adolescence books? Um, those are the only two books that okay. I had for adolescence. I got one more then. I'll okay. throw those out there. Well, I have two more. I, along with the Babysitter's Club, <laughs> I also like the Little Women series. And Who are you? <laughs> I like I like fiction. Little Women? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hmm. So Little Women, and then there was a sequel called Little Men. And then there was a sequel to that called Joe's Boys. And that trilogy was really enjoyable. So uh, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Joe ends up growing up. She's the main character of Little Women. She grows up, marries the German guy from the book, and they end up opening up a boarding school. Mm -hmm. And that's what Little Women and then Joe's Boys are those same same kids later on. So grown up. Um, so yeah, yeah, those three. And then lastly... Um, I enjoyed the Little House on the Prairie series as a kid, Man. too. So I could not get enough of anything <laughs> in the West, in the Prairie, right. that, that kind of stuff. So. Oh, man. Now you just reminded me of the one book. I think there was a couple books, but it was The Indian in the Cupboard. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yep. I Those were good one. books. Yeah. Go back and read that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one was good. And then the... Wow. My absolute favorite book as a kid. It's not a series, so it doesn't qualify here. But My Side of the Mountain is a book about one? a kid who ran away. It took take place in the '60s or something like that. Ran away to the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York, and ended up living in a tree. And he huh. had a pet falcon, and he would like kill deer and make his own bread out of acorn flour and all this Jeez. kind of stuff. And ended up living in the woods for two or three years by himself and that was an awesome one because it wow. had pictures in it and sh showed you how to create some of the traps and stuff oh. that you have. <laughs> so. awesome but yeah the Indian in the cupboard go back and read some of those books now that you're an adult yeah or if nothing else buy them for your kids yeah well so that they can enjoy them we I got um a Henry Huggins book mm -hmm. do you remember do you know okay well that that was a book we I read in fourth grade it was Beverly Clearly, she wrote all these mm -hmm. like books like that, and I think they were. I didn't know at the time, but now they look like they're in the '60s, like mm -hmm. the time frame. But yeah, it was just about a boy in growing up in elementary school and like learning hard lessons. Like he like bought all these cats, and he was like tucking them in his shirt and trying to sell them. And he went to a job interview with them in his shirt. He was like, you know, it was very, I don't know, <laughs> just it kind of like th Three's Company, mm -hmm. that kind of humor. Like you try to hide something and you have to do something else or some like misunderstandings and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> good books. Cool. Yeah. 
I have to confess, my adult books are written for teen audiences. <laughs> that's fine. I, that's, that's but I'm ready to move into the, the ones I've enjoyed more okay. recently. Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't get into those. Really? Yeah, because it was like a first person where she was like, I, mm -hmm. I did this. I fell down the rock or I fell down the mountain. A fireball almost hit me. I don't know. I don't remember that part. Or I don't remember it being first person. Yeah. But that typically doesn't distract me. I'll tell you one series that got ruined for me in was the Divergent series. Okay, Because yeah. I read that, and the first two books in that series were first person from, uh, from her perspective. But then the third book, the last book, ended up switching chapter to chapter from her perspective to Four's perspective. Uh, and there was a specific reason, and you find out why, but it got very distracting. And I'm like, oh, this, um, it took me out of the situation, out of the enjoyment of those books. Yeah. That last book kind of ruined that one for me. How many books were there? Three? Three. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Hunger Games, especially my favorite one was the last one. Um, it's Hunger Games, Mocking Jay. No, Hunger Games, Catching Fire, Mocking Jay. Mm -hmm. I liked the last one um, at the time that I was reading them. It was 2010, I think. I was really getting into libertarianism, <laughs> and she ends up killing um, both. She ends up killing the leader that she was on the side of oh, the whole geez. time in the last one. Instead of killing President Snow, she kills uh, President. Coin, I want to say her name okay. was, and it was an awesome. It it was awesome to me because she saw how she'd become a tool of just another government oh, that had risen gotcha. up to overthrow one, uh -huh. and it was basically like we're going to be better with no government than yeah. if we have. So it was the same thing essentially. Yeah, like yeah, one person in power got everybody else against the other person in power, and then just wanted power for themselves. So <sighs> it's a book our time we need at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like that one. Cool. What um, do you got? Well, the rest of mine are like TV shows. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go with an easy one. Breaking Bad. That okay. was one of my top favorite fiction series. I, me and Janie are watching it. Mm -hmm. Again? Um, well, I'm re-watching it. Janie's watching it for the first time. She's, mm -hmm. she's like on the edge of her seat yeah. the whole time. That was intense. Yeah. I don't think since Breaking Bad went off the air, I don't think a show like it has has replaced it. Right. Because it was just such a great series. Yeah. Because she was like. <laughs> There's a Breaking Bad sized hole. Yeah. In my TV schedule. <laughs> yeah. Because there was like a part where he was like making the big drug deal with Gus at first, the mm -hmm. first time, and his wife called and said, "I'm going into labor." And Janie was just. I looked at her and she was just like. What the heck is going to happen? Like she was just so anxious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, yes, you're giving this a, more of a chance. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Yep. Uh, I'm going to throw this one out there. I only read them recently, but they are older. The Harry Potter series. Oh, okay. Um, I did not read those when I was a kid. I discounted them when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I think I was 15 or so when the first one came out. When but did they come out? I think 99 or 98 was okay. the first one. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe 97. Yeah. Um, they started making the movies in 2002, I think, mm -hmm. or one. Um, <clears throat> I read um, four years ago, I think. I was working for myself yeah. when I read them, and I read all of them in the span of couple months mm -hmm. so but they're fantastic yeah and and for me an important part of a good series is a good ending mm -hmm. and the last book in most series <laughs> or the last chapter stuff like that usually ends up screwing Terrible. up for me yeah so i really enjoyed uh the harry potter ending last books um they just got better as they went along they got more mature they were more and more enjoyable cool as you push through yeah and, and get into them so I read half of the Sorcerer's Stand. It was good. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I didn't continue. Um, and then I read the first book in that um, Percy Jackson. Mm -hmm. Jackson. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah. I loved that one. I just, but I never got into the other books. I push. Just, push. <laughs> that's on my series. Yeah. That, that's on mine. Yeah. Percy Jackson was really enjoyable. Yeah. 
And so. I love Greek mythology yeah. too, so that helped me. That's why I that's yeah. why it appealed so much is yeah. a lot of the stories or the people that you would meet or stuff. They all had these different yeah uh, myths behind them. Yeah, and then you'd find they were actually you know demigods uh, or they. Uh, I'm totally blanking on all of them now, but you'd actually find out that this one was continually pushing a stone up a hill every, you know, oh, all yeah. the time. And yeah. Was that Sisyphus? I think. I okay. Know. Yeah. And they're, um, yeah, they went to like this, um, pottery place, outdoor pottery place. Mm -hmm. And there was like all these stone outdoor garden stands. Yeah. And it was like, the lady's name was, um, M something medusa yeah it was it, medusa's it was medusa, pottery yeah. yeah and all those things she had turned into stone yeah because they looked her in the face mm -hmm. yep yeah that was really really good yeah. i think my wife just finished those mm -hmm. i got her to read those i think it's four books or yeah. five books mm -hmm. so but they only made two movies yeah so they, the second one was not good yeah or did they make three maybe it was just two yeah but they went downhill <laughs> but the books are good yeah Cool. Um, th this one I read with Chloe, mm -hmm. so it's more just fun. But um, Babysitters Club, <laughs> um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. Okay. Those mm -hmm. are awesome. I've They're never so read them myself. Yeah, my kids love them though. Yeah, They're funny. And Those the movies. And Captain Underpants. It's a good thing we're not shooting a wedding or something I priceless know. that can't be replicated. I know. <laughs> you may now kiss the. <laughs> yep. Um. And the first book in the series is called Off to Be the Wizard. And mm -hmm. it's a book about computer programmers who are just wasting time surfing around the internet and come across this this text file that's just gigantic. And they open up the text file because it's like 10 terabytes big or something yeah. like that. And they start to play with it and realize that this is the text file that determines all of reality. Huh. And if you edit certain things on the text file, you can edit reality so mm -hmm. you can add money to your bank account you can make yourself taller which is very dangerous because it just stretches you it doesn't uh, actually like uh, grow you grow you like yeah. you can change your location so like if i change the coordinates of my location it can put me a foot up in the air or it can put me over there or something like that but by editing this text file um, they basically draw the attention of the police because most of them will automatically add $10 million to their bank account that has no source. Sudden, yeah. It's like it came from nowhere. Yeah. It just all of a sudden appeared one day. Yeah. And so they all end up going to the mid the medieval times, um, mm -hmm. ba going back to the Dark Ages, because that's the best place for someone who has these magical abilities to blend in. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the first book off to be the wizard. The second one is Spell or High Water, and it takes place in Atlantis because it was good to be in the Dark Ages if you were a wizard. It's not to good to be in the Dark Ages if you're a witch. witch. Right. So they all go to Atlantis, and so the second one takes place there. Hmm. And then the third one take, uh, is called um, An Unwelcomed Quest. And he's still writing books in the series, too, so there'll be more. Awesome. And the third one is dealing with somebody that they banished. And when they banish somebody from the medieval, uh, the Dark Ages, uh, for breaking the code or something like that, they send them off into the future, but then create, edit their text file so that any time they get within, like, 50 feet of a computer or something, all electronics shut off. Oh. And it basically completely ruins the person's life because they can't fly in a plane anymore, they can't yeah. drive a car, they can't use a computer, yeah. all these things. Oh, man. And so the Unwelcome Quest is dealing with somebody that they did that to, and they're trying to get back. Mm. Um, but it's fantastic. They're That's a great awesome. series. Um, cool. Yeah, highly yeah. recommend those. So that's it for series. Okay. We've got lots of books we've talked about before, but I wanted to talk about books specifically that had mm -hmm. sequels and stuff. Yeah. So. I'm always scared with series, though, because it's like the first book, I'm like into it. Mm -hmm. And then the second book, I'm like, I don't know about this. Yeah. You know. Oh, one more I want to throw out there because it was very much like that um, Ender's Game. Mm-hmm. So Ender's Game was a great standalone book, but if you read the second one, which I think was called Speaker for the Dead, it completely changes your perspective mm -hmm. on what happened in the first one. And then there was a third one after that, and I think my opinion is 
you can stop after you read the second or the third one. Mm-hmm. But he's continued, like Ender's Game was written like 1982 or something. Mm-hmm. And Orson Scott Card has continued writing in that same series for the past 35 years. So he's still, I think as of like 2010 or something, still publishing books in that same series. Jeez. But they just went downhill from there. <laughs> but I always tell people, I'm like, if you liked Ender's Game, read the second one to get a different perspective on what happened there. Right. And it's really, it's really interesting. <clears throat> so, um, but you don't need to keep reading. That's yeah. the thing about the series. If the series goes south, quit it. <laughs> yeah. Don't keep reading. Don't it. Keep it, reading might, it. It's probably not going to, it never get, it never gets better. <laughs> I made that mistake. One of the, one of those that was a great first book was the maze runner. Mm-hmm. That was a great first book. Mm-hmm. And I should have stopped in the second book. But I pushed through all the way to the end of the third, and I'm just like, man, that was not not satisfying at all. <laughs> yeah, so. I have the first one. First yeah. one was great. I think yeah. I read it in a day. It was <sighs> yes. edge of my seat the whole time. So nice. yeah, but stop there. <laughs> stop. Yeah. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Okay. We'll wrap this episode up. Where can people find you? I am on Instagram at CP underscore EH, and I also write daily on BarrettYoung.com. And I'm on Twitter at Char Changs, and please support the show at Patreon.com slash Debt. See ya. Hadouken!